Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. A trip three hours from home to the scenic mountain town of Cochrane, Alberta. And the reason I'm here is because a fellow has a storage unit completely packed full of golden and silver age and bronze age comics, which means they range from probably the 1930s to the 1970s or so. And how many comics are there? Apparently 8,000 of them. <laughs> so we're gonna go have a look. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to strike a deal today. I don't know if they'll even fit my vehicle, but if they don't, um, I have uh, found that there's a place here that has trailers for rent. So we might just end up getting a little U-Haul if this deal goes through, but I'm waiting for a train in town here. As soon as that passes, we're gonna keep on trucking and go check this out. We have made our way out to a storage yard kind of off the beaten path out here a little bit. And there's a ton of different storage lockers. I'm guessing the one we're going to is around back. Hey, look, an old, is that a Toyota? It's kind of neat. It's always cool cars stored out at a storage locker. Hmm, no more cars, Alex. Stay focused, today's about comic books. It's not a very big storage unit, but there is a lot of stuff. It's mainly all cowboy related. I mean, it makes sense that we're kind of out in Wild West territory here that it would be. But every box is packed full of Western books and comics and collectibles. Definitely a lot of stuff. question is going to be whether we can make a deal come together on it and it really comes down to a numbers game there's about 7,000 or so comics we figure here plus the collectibles plus there's a whole bunch of movie posters um you have to price it out per item figure out what a good bulk deal would be and hope that you can get it at a price that makes sense so we'll see what they have to say okay guys well i made the deal come together um a lot of stuff we have to load so much stuff it will not fit in my vehicle what is my game plan here well I anticipated this and I actually pre-booked a trailer at the local U-Haul which is waiting for me in case this deal happened so I'm on my way to go pick up a little U-Haul trailer and use that to take everything back into town and boy oh boy is it a lot of stuff well that's how it's done there is not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful for the fact that I have a very understanding wife who trusts my uh, judgment when it comes to buying stuff for the business. She, Melissa, and the kids are waiting for me at home right now. I've just given them the heads up that I'm arriving with the trailer and they're gonna help me offload so I can go return the trailer in town now. Uh, did a one-way rental on that. And get everything um, in our garage so I can sort it and then price it and get it off to the store. But uh, Melissa, love you kids, love you. Thank you for your help. Okay guys, you have to see what I've done. I'm still married, <laughs> but my garage is full yet again. And here I am trying to save up for our store. But when these deals come along, sometimes you have to make the deal work so that you have the potential for some good profit. Let me show you what we have here. 
I brought one of the boxes of the 40 or more boxes up that's there to show you guys kind of a sample of what's inside. I'm gonna grab a random comic. Okay, three Stooges, 12 cent. And what's in this section here? More Three Stooges. Okay, it's probably the Three Stooge section I think I'm in right now. Ricky Nelson. He was, of course, a big singer. Ricky Nelson comics. And what's this? John Carter of Mars. Very fine near mint condition. It's labeled as. It is in really nice shape, actually. John Carter of Mars. These old space comics are actually pretty collectible. Out of the shadows. Oral Roberts True Stories, 1957. The older, the better. He did not collect Spider-Man though. So I don't think I'm gonna be coming across any, you know, huge scores in that sense. But, you know, if there's more of these sort of, yeah, like this, Tom Corbett Space Cadet, 1954. You know, in near mint condition. Very fine. Really good coloring on that. And the nice thing is they're all on boards. So I'm gonna have my work cut out for me to go through these, but I think I might have uh, done quite well today. Nearly 10,000 <laughs> comic books and magazines and collectibles and who knows what else. I haven't gone through most of these boxes yet, plus movie posters and all kinds of stuff. So I started going through some of the boxes upstairs already and I've been finding some really great things, some early space comics and others. Um, so let's dig through a few of these boxes together and see exactly, well, not exactly, we'll get an idea of what's inside. Jimmy Wakely. And he was uh, collecting a series of them. So. Uh, that's actually, that's number one. And I imagine he would have like the whole set. And I believe this fellow collected for quite some time. Romance Trail, 1950. These are early, early comic books. Ken Maynard Western, Lash LaRue, number one. Introducing Lash LaRue, that's gotta be a good one. Lash LaRue, Lash LaRue. Boy, they sure made a big series of Lash LaRue, didn't they? But, you know, when you find the number ones of anything, that's where the big money is. Um, we're gonna have to look these guys up and see kind of what they're going for. But uh, every single box that I have here is packed full of golden age, primarily golden age. I actually haven't found too much for silver. Golden age comics, of course, being from the 1940s. Look at this. Look what we have here. Can it be the Lone Ranger? It is, 10 cent comics. And sometimes they switch out, like it would be Gold Key and then Dell. Um, the painted covers are worth more, but I wanna show you the condition of these things. So it's marked as being near mint, and then you look at it and you go, yeah, it is. This thing is in near mint condition. In every single comic book in these boxes, um, he pretty much only collected um, mint or near mint stuff. So everything is in really, really nice shape and it's all boarded and, and protected, basically ready to go. Um, what am I gonna do with all this stuff? Boy, I haven't figured that out yet. Tonto, let's see, they're packed in here. Hyo Silver Comics. I guess that's just kind of the, the Lone Ranger box. Let's see what's at the back here. I'm trying to find another box of space stuff. I think the space comics are pretty cool. We had lots of Tom Corbett space cadets in the other one. Lone Ranger's pretty neat though. I'm not I'm not complaining about finding a box full of Lone Ranger comics. You know, everything in here is cool. It takes a lot to get me excited, but finding a collection like this is really a once in a lifetime sort of thing. Um, you know, Somebody was collecting these for years and years and years, and I bought them all in one foul swoop. And a lot of them are really rare. You know, especially to find complete runs, to find complete sets of them. And they go back, back into the 1940s. Apparently there's some in the, in the 1930s around here too. Um, he was a big fan of Westerns, as you can kind of tell from going through some of these boxes. What do we have in this one? It's time for 
Oh, Christmas Schwinn Racer. That's the back of the comic. Here's more Lone Ranger, but this is quite a bit earlier. This is Dell from 1946. That is number three. I wonder if I have number two or one in here. There's number two. Do I have number one? No, I don't think I have number one, but I do have number two, which is pretty cool. Western Treasuries, Lone Ranger movie stories. Yeah, there's there's a pile of Lone Ranger in here. These are the earlier ones. Of course, Lone Ranger is a popular series, so easy to find people who collect this stuff. Here's some that aren't Western. The Man from Uncle, number one in near mint condition. And I wonder if this is sort of the spy section, if there's gonna be other spy books in here too. Oh, James Garner, Maverick from the 1950s. I actually used to like James Garner's acting. Zane Gray, King of the Mounted Police. That's a cool one. Early 1950. Boy, this is going to take me forever to go through all this stuff. Sergeant Preston of the Yukon. I love those Mountie covers. <laughs> there he is, just a guy and his dog. Oh, look, he's on the scent maybe, trying to find a bad guy. Okay. Well, the boxes, for the most part, are labeled. Sunset Carson, Cowboy Western, Tex Ritter, Red Mass, Tomahawk. Now, of course, um, no Amazing Spider-Man or anything like that. Oh, look, this one says Tarzan. That might be a little interesting. There we go, some nice early Tarzan. And this is what they call a painted cover because it's not a picture, it's not a photograph. Somebody had to do this artwork, this painting. Uh, and a lot of people do collect certain artists. So they'll look for certain comic book artists and they'll collect only their work. Some are more valuable and desirable than others. As you get later on, let's see if I can find one. Lucky for me, these are mostly, see there's a, there's a photo cover. That's not as collectible. Everybody wants, well, everybody, a lot of people want the painted covers because they just, you know, they want them for the artwork. They're really cool. And uh, Tarzan is still really collectible. Look, Tarzan's got dinosaurs. Now, there's a problem he didn't expect in the jungle. So they start running out of ideas. Tarzan has to fight a dinosaur. Oh, well, look, it's happened multiple times. <laughs> anyway, I'm having lots of fun going through this. What's in this box? Oh, it's old comic book price guides. Tons and tons of price guides. Old ones. Okay. And what's in these binders? Oh, okay. I think... Well, for whatever reason, these are just the covers. I don't think that the comics are in there. I think this is just the covers. I guess he was collecting covers too. I didn't know people did that, but I guess if you want it for the artwork, I can understand that. I mean, they're really neat, even though the comic isn't inside of them. Hmm. Nurse Linda Lark. Well, there could be, you know, it'd be nice to find like a first edition Spider-Man or something. Amazing fantasy in here, or Superman, like maybe there's even just a cover would be good. But I have a feeling that the genres he was into was not that. There we go. Mission Impossible. Yeah. Okay, so these are just the, the covers inside of the the binders. Well, that's still neat, though. I'm going to keep going through the comics and see what else is in here. This one doesn't look like comic book covers, it's pictures. Autograph pictures. Okay. Ruth Terry, actress singer. So these must be all Western stars that he was a fan of. And they're all autographed. That's quite the collection of autograph pictures. Rex Allen. And then their official stills. These are some lobby cards. This is what the the movies would have uh, or the theaters would have had these to display their latest stars. Monty Hale autograph, several Monty Hale 
autographs in here. <laughs> is there a Clint Eastwood autograph? That'd be cool. Boy, this is neat. And this is early Western stuff. Look, there's Lash LaRue autographed. Another one there, autographed. From your whip tossing pal, Lash LaRue. Well, Lash, your picture lives on here in my garage. Boy, I'm getting lost with how much cool stuff there is here. And there's binders and binders and binders full of other comic book covers. I don't know if there's any more autographs, but look at that. There's more and more and more binders full of stuff and books. And let's see, that one's marked miscellaneous. Let's look in there. What's in the box? Oh, little Lone Ranger book. These must be like little kid books. Oh, lunch kits. I see lunch kits. Some more books, big little books. A whole bunch of big little books. And lunch pails. It's an absolutely pristine Roy Rogers lunch kit. And thermos. Oh man. My dad would have loved this stuff. He was a big Roy Rogers fan. Well, Dad, wherever you are, I wish you were here. But I remember you like this stuff. Now I get to have fun with it. For now, anyway. Well, I'm going to bring some of these books upstairs and keep going through them. I've got to price a whole bunch of things. It's going to take me a while. Oh. So I was sorting all night long pretty well. I went to bed at like 1.30 in the morning or so. But I'm back at it this morning looking through stuff. And it's just an amazing a collection all the way around. This last box I looked at full of 1940s Red Rider comic books. And there's gotta be about 200 of them in there. So, um, sure have my hands full again. I've done this to myself again, but when am I ever gonna get a chance to buy this many Golden Age and Silver Age comics in one go? It took this gentleman his entire life and uh, sometimes you have to take a risk and go big and get the big collection. But thank you very much for watching guys. Uh, we'll have more I guess information as I sort through these and try to figure out what to do with them. If you're a Golden Age or Silver Age Western comic book collector, well, you should probably email me because I have uh, thousands of them. Thanks very much for watching again today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful day. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.